How do? Ever wanted more from your summer house? Time for a top weekend project. So here we are with the newly erected summer house. Uh, so this one is brand new, but whether yours might be a few years old. But well worth insulating the insides to make it an all year round place to be. So I'm going to use in this log lap tongue and groove. So you can see we have tongue and we have groove. And it's going to look a little bit like a log house when it's done. Which should look really cool. And then I'm using loft insulation because we're going to attach this log lap to the inside edges. In this corner we're fine because we can attach to that and to that. In this corner I've had to put an extra beam in because this side fence actually went further in. So I still have then two surfaces to attach in the corner. So I'll have a look at your internal corners and see if it needs any extra bracing. So each of these internal sections on this shed uh, sorry, summer house, is 44 centimetres wide. So that means I need to cut down the loft insulation because that's obviously way too wide and I don't want it overlapping these. I only want it sitting inside so it's not going to get in the way of clamping things down. So we need to cut this stuff down. Here's a trick. Now, obviously with it being a log shaped, uh, it means to join them up in the corners, you've got a couple of options. One of them is to try and match the curve on the end of the next piece, which could be done, but it will be very, very time consuming. The best and easiest option is to just cut a 45 degree chamfer on each end, and then they'll slot in nicely uh, once that's done. Now, if you have a compound miter saw, this would be the perfect time to drag it out to cut all of these 45 degree angles on. If you don't have one, let me show you the poor man's version. This is the poor man's version of a compound miter saw. We have a 45 degree cut on some old scrap wood clamped onto a workbench. So all we need to do is slot our piece in between the middle, get the edge flush with the edge of this, tighten that up, and air presto. When we then run the saw, we can hold the saw nicely and flat on there, and just start sawing, and that's going to give us a lovely 45 degree cut. <laughs> one of the big things for me as I build this is I don't want to see any nails or screws in this log lap because I think that would ruin part of the illusion. So why I've done it this side with the groove on the upside so we can actually put a little pin nail just inside that groove, tap it in and then finish it off with a flat screwdriver. Then, as we keep stacking, you're not going to see any nails or screws at all. Now that there's a few layers down on the floor, and I've got an extra little brace prepped, ready to go as well, I'm going to put the insulation in between these four things. So I can tuck them in the bottom, and then I can use this extra post just to pin them roughly across the top, just to hold it in place while I carry on then boarding right the way up that side. So the 100mm thick insulation is a bit too thick really, I don't want to compress that much. But it does half pretty perfectly. Uh, it tends to come in layers, so it's just working your way down, splitting it in half, and that's going to fill my 35mm gap.
sometimes you'll find that the planks have a bit of a twist on them and actually need pinning in uh, so they're okay at that end but it needs pinning in with a little bit more than just a little nail i think so we put a screw in this end section to really pin that in notice this one also has a bore on it so it's flat down at both edges but not in the middle so when you come to put one in here we can just pull that down and close the gap up now imagine while it's chucking it down outside you're in your nice warm log line shed oh that's gonna be lovely and with winter coming you probably want a new christmas jumper don't you maybe one like this or perhaps one a little bit more like this head to the link in the description and use the code christ10 to get a christmas 10 percent off throughout october november and december go grab one now so it turns out the carpet adhesive is actually so good it just holds all of that up in one without needing a pull right so two sides done which is super nice uh, the next thing i'm going to do instead of focusing on the window sides and all the fiddly bits there i'm going to get the ceiling done because it's forecast to chuck it down and it's big sheets of plywood that i need to work with outside um, also with the walls you can see at the top i'm going to have to cut one down lengthwise all the way around which is a bit of a bummer but kind of to be expected really so the the plywood sheeting is going to sit on top of here and tuck into that gap so i actually need that in place before i can fit this top level anyway uh, right so now i've got to cut that plywood sheet to match i'm actually going to use this center line still with the plywood sheeting which means i've got an almost 45 degree cut to do in that corner so this is where I'm going to pull out this tool from Seika. It's just a big protractor, especially designed for mitre saws, which we've already established I don't have. But it means I can set that it's very sturdy. I love this thing. It's brilliant. Uh, it's a really sturdy tool. So I could set that to a very specific angle or I can just use it as a copy and paste. Just like we needed to in the corners, we need to put some of these extra little braces across the ceiling so that we've got something for the sheeting to attach to. Now we're getting to the window sections. There's going to be lots and lots of cuts here. Um, at the top and the bottom, you'll probably find that you'll need to cut halfway through the length of the plank as well. So fit it in sideways and then just mark it off with a pencil where that wants to cut off. Trimming up the edges, uh, I'm slightly overcutting each one of these pieces so that when we're done, I can just do one saw line right the way down and then we know that's all going to be nice and flush. I'll point out as well here, while putting the nail in, as far away from this edge as we can get so it doesn't split this back section off completely. Before I go any higher with the windows, I'm going to now fill in uh, this top section along here. So we've cut this piece down to size. I've also then used a hand plane to cut the tongue down quite considerably and to chamfer the back of it off so that we can rotate it into that gap. Well, 
Good morning, I'm back again. And in the meantime, it's been decorated. Oh, fantastic, what a lovely little space. Right, so the last thing to do to make this winterproof is basically to seal up these windows. You can see there's some great big gaps running up the sides. So we're going to create an internal frame around both windows, put some draft excluding tape on and make that a bit more airtight so we don't get howling gales in the middle of winter. So just fitting sections all the way around. So there we've got the bottom ones slightly larger so it's almost like a window ledge. And then we'll have strips going up the side and we've got this strip at the top, um, which then we're again, we're just gonna put the airtight ceiling on the back of it. one edged off sealed window unit. <sighs> and with that, we wait for winter. Subscribe, we'll see you soon. God bless, bye bye.